Happy Wednesday, kittens. It is December 2nd, 2015, and this is not a podcast episode 138. <laughs> Welcome, and thank you so much for joining me today. I am your host, Amanda. You can find me as Wit on Ravelry or as So Nitpicky on Instagram and on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me today, both new and returning viewers. I always appreciate when you choose to spend some of your precious time with me and catching up on what I'm up to. I also like to hear back from you, so if you want to leave me a YouTube comment or a comment on the blog, which is so nitpicky.net, or if you would like to join us in the Not a Podcast Ravelry group and chat with us in the episode threads, feel free to join in, please because I always love to hear from you guys and to have you involved in the conversation. So I've already mentioned the blog. Um, if you are looking for full show notes, you will find them over at sonyapiggy.net. And I am also the dyer for Lammy Toes, which is lammytoeshop.etsy.com. And Lammy is finally getting updated again, and I'm hoping to maybe update this weekend with some winter colorways. Um, I'm hoping to get my dye pots going either this afternoon or definitely tomorrow morning at the latest. So hopefully there will be something in there for Saturday or possibly Sunday, but um, watch my Instagram feed, which is so nitpicky if you want to know for sure when updates are. So let's see. I think that's everything for now. Uh, thank you to everyone who has joined the Ravelry group or is subscribed to the YouTube channel or follows my blog. Um, it's always much appreciated. And I just wanted to say that I do notice that you guys are there. And thanks. I love you guys. Do a little tweet heart. Uh, so let's see. This week was Thanksgiving. Uh, I talked to you guys the day before Thanksgiving last. And here we had a really good one. Um, we kept things really simple because it was just me and my husband and my kids. We did turkey and we did um, roasted carrots and some mashed potatoes and a couple types of pie, which turned out very well. I tried a new pie crust recipe this year that I think is pretty much a keeper. It's one of the better gluten-free ones I've tried and I think I'm gonna stick with it for now and maybe play with it a little bit in the future. Uh, things went really well though. And we had a really good holiday. Um, nobody's been ill. We all had a pretty good time. My children got a little cranky by the end of five days off, but they're back in school again, so that's always a good thing. And uh, the weather is still way too warm. <laughs> um, it, it's been getting colder, but it's not proper late November, early December weather. Right now, the weather honestly reminds me of mid to late October which has me a bit worried because I'm afraid that once winter does hit, we're all going to die. It's possible. Oh, I don't even want to think about it yet because it will come soon enough, but based on the 10-day forecast, it's not happening before mid-December at this point, and that has me kind of scared. So anyway, today we have a pretty short podcast. There isn't a ton of content. Um, I have one work in progress to show you guys some stash enhancement at things I got in the mail. Um, I have a giveaway, so stick around for that. If you are interested in cross-stitching, I'll have a giveaway. And I do have one Ask Me Anything that just popped up in the group that I wrote down and we will talk about for a bit. So let's just get into things, and the spoiler alert is going on up here because the only thing I worked on is the same pair of socks from Hand Knit Hand Spun Christmas that I was working on last week. So these are being knit in Fluff Fibers Superwash Merino that I spun up in the Frog Prince colorway. Fluff is no longer dying. Um, I think she stopped several years ago, and it was before I started spinning, and I think it's because she had a baby. I think. And I don't think she's gotten back into dyeing that I know of, which is sad because the few braids I've spun from her have been very nice. So anyway, this is the second sock. The first one is a little bit taller than this right now, but I've been working on the legs. But I'm only showing you one this week. So you guys saw these last week. These are gradients in different greens heading into browns and then back into greens. Um, last week when I showed these to you, I had just gotten past the heel on both socks. So the first sock is more like up here with the ribbing. This one I'm to here. Um, that is my husband texting me. I'm just gonna clear that out so he doesn't uh, make any more noise. <laughs> so anyway, um, 
I'm thinking the height that I had this other one at might be a good height for the leg, which is about yeah, a good four, four and a half inches, because I'm not sure about the recipient's leg shape and how wide they would need to get these much farther up their calves. So I'm thinking about making this one the same length as the other one, and I'm looking to do Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. So I'm guessing that at most I have another hour to work on these, maybe 75 minutes. So these are almost done. So as you can see, I'm not going to use up quite the full skein. Um, this is what I have left. But I would say I have less than 25% of the yarn here, so it's going to be a pretty good close one in terms of using a full, I think this um, skein was a full four ounces of hand spun when it first started. So it might be a, about the equivalent of a regular skein of yarn. 100 grams is usually three and a half ounces, not four. So um, it might be about a full three and a half ounce skein of very, very close worth. So I'm really excited to get those started. And down will come the spoiler because I have nothing else to show you guys. I was really um, busy with other things this week. I was busy doing stuff for Lanny. I had a little update with her. Um, thank you to everyone who placed orders over the holiday weekend. Um, everything, I think, has been shipped out up until this point, and except for like one custom order. And yeah, I just had a lot of other things I needed to do. We've been prepping our house and getting ready to put up our Christmas decorations, which did not get done because my husband has been working very long hours again this week. He's got another week and a half of long hours, and then hopefully the third week of December here, he's hopefully going to be on half days, so we might actually get stuff done finally. I'm looking forward to that. So anyway, um, I did not get to cross stitch at all. I had hoped to do at least 15 minutes a day every day. I still haven't gone in and found my pattern for the cross stitch I want to work on. The patterns are hiding somewhere in my drawers out in my living room that I was sitting in front of last week, and I just haven't gone to dig and find the one for the sampler that I want to finish. And then I have to make sure that I know where the flosses were that I was working with, because I have two different containers of flosses, and I'm not sure which ones go to which sampler I was working on. So um, due to disorganization and this really little barrier that should not have stopped me, I have not gotten around to doing it. I just was like, no, I'd rather knit the socks. And truly, I do still have two more gifts to knit after this so I kind of got to hurry at this point guys I'm down to less than four weeks um, and three or two and a half weeks before we travel back home because I will be in Wisconsin but we will talk about that closer to the end of the podcast so stash enhancements and other things that came in the mail so I had a really nice week in terms of packages because I did do some ordering um, the first thing I'll show you guys is if you do not follow Casey, who is Tangerine Designs, I think you can find her under that on Instagram, and her Etsy shop is Tang Tangerine Designs. I think she might be called Tangerine 8 or something similar. She is best known maybe for her project bags and kits that she puts out, but she also does a bunch of... Um, laser cut wood items. She does needle minders for cross stitch, she does needle gauges, and every year she does an ornament. And she's been doing them since I think 2012 or is it 2011? But I've gotten one every year that she's done them. And this year's ornament is a hedgehog. So my ornament finally came and she always uses little bits and pieces of hand spun to hang these with. And this is this year's ornament and he is adorable. I love hedgehogs a lot. Um, hedgehogs, foxes, deer, um, and other little woodland creatures are all my favorites. Badgers, I love badgers. Um, I'm originally from the Badger State, and I have a love for it. And uh, sorry, that's another text from my husband, which is good news, but not at this exact moment in time. <laughs> so anyway, ornament came from Tangerine 8. These are relatively inexpensive. I think they're like $10 plus shipping. And she, at the time of the year when she brings out the new ornaments, she brings out the old ornaments too. So if you didn't know about these ornaments and you'd like to collect them, there's an owl, a raccoon, and I think a fox. So yeah, I would say that's 14, 13, 12, 2012 was the first time. Oh my goodness, he really wants to talk. Why don't I turn the sound off on him? Because right now, I just can't answer him back. Sorry. So now you all know I have two different text tones. 
So anyway, yes, since 2012 she's been doing these. And if you want to order the whole set, you can absolutely do that. But I'm looking forward to getting these on my tree this year because I'm starting to have a very nice little collection of them. So the next thing that came in is I participated in the Fat Squirrels um, pre-order for her library card bags, which I think went live on November 1st. That sounds right. And I missed out on the first run of these bags, and I had thought about it and decided not to. And then friends and other people in my life got them, and I decided I absolutely had to have one of these bags. So I made sure to set a timer, and I got on right away, and I ordered a large sweater bag. Now, she has these really nice um, leather-type tags or velour-type tags where her name's stamped in them. And then these are the library card bags. They're a lot of fun. Lots and lots of different things. Some of my favorite books are on this one. Um, this one has Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, my favorite book growing up, uh, Louise Fitzhugh's Harriet the Spy. That was my absolute favorite book when I was, oh, like seven to ten years old. And I wanted to be Harriet so badly. And that's why I started journaling, actually, and why I've been a a diary keeper ever since. Jane Austen is on here. Um, a Wrinkle in Time is on this one. Uh, Choose Your Own Adventures. And uh, some of my favorite poets like Emily Dickinson is on here and Sylvia Plath. And then there's a Scandinavian Legends and Folk Tales that I kind of want to look up now and see what it is because I don't know those so well. But anyway, it's an amazing bag. It's huge. You can see it's definitely big enough that I could fit probably five to seven cakes of sweater yarn in here and it comes with a detachable handle on this one because it's such a large bag so I'm extremely excited about this because I do like Amy Beth's bags I have one that I ordered last year at Rhinebeck that came right after Rhinebeck that I use quite often when I'm working on slightly bigger projects set that off to the side Oh, let's see kittens. So the other thing that I got before I talk about the thing related to the giveaway is I participated in Eat Sleep Knit's Black Friday sales and my first order came. I have a hard time resisting the sale. I have not made a single order all year with Eat Sleep Knit and I wanted to get to at least um, the Five Mile Club, which I'm almost to. Well, not, I guess that one's not the club, but that one's a prize, and I want to get to that. And I'm only like 1,100 yards off from it, so I'll probably make one more order before the end of the year. But my first order is for a sweater I would like to knit, and this is all Juniper Farm Harriet Pure Extra Fine Baby Alpaca. And it is in the color, they call it color number six, and it's this gorgeous brown gray. Go figure, right? Um, I've decided that apparently my favorite color is like squirrel, because that's kind of what this is. It's like squirrel gray, where it's got that brown in there, or like mouse. It's kind of like a mouse or a rabbit. I just apparently want to be the same color as a little woodland animal. So I have eight of these. And I have plans to do a Hey Girl cardigan, which is a design by Chic Knits. Bon Marie Burns. Um, and it's the same pattern on it that was in, on my Uma cardigan. And I loved that sweater a lot. And I got this one. And it's a DK weight instead of a worsted weight. And it's shaped differently, but it has the same waffly texture on it. So I'm really looking forward to working with these. These are so soft. You guys have no idea. I wish you could reach through and just squish them because I can't wear alpaca in general because it feels like it's stabbing me. Um, but I've been playing with these on my neck. I've almost decided to do the shirt test where you nest it down in and wear it close to the skin. But I'm not feeling anything on my neck at this point that would hint that I'm not going to be able to wear this yarn. Um, I think I just have to go for the baby alpaca or the super baby alpaca and I should be able to wear it. But living where I do, super warm, super soft yarn is always a good thing. Uh, so I'm looking forward to using this. And I haven't done a ton of stashing this year, so I feel kind of justified in buying not one but two sweater quantities from the sale. And with this one, I was lucky on my ticket. I won a little gift credit that I'm going to put send to them at the end of the year. 
hopefully my next one will win me something because I kind of hope so. Um, if you're not familiar with Eat Sleep Knit, it's my favorite online store, I think. Um, I kind of consider it my LYS because I move around so much, but um, I've known Erin since before she opened, and I love her taste in yarn, and I love that she carries a lot of the same yarn that I love, so it's always the first place I go and check for stuff before I look anywhere else. So next week there will be Eat Sleep Knit order number two, <laughs> which will look probably just about the same, but it's a different base and a different yarn. So anyway, the last thing that came for me this week in the mail is I talked to you, I think, really quickly last week about uh, the Frosted Pumpkin Stitcheries 2016 sampler. And I had ordered one of each of the needle minders for myself. And um, I've got my supplies coming soon, so I should be able to show those next week. But the needle minders this year, because the theme is travel, there is Sugarloaf and Jack in an airplane. Let's see if it'll focus on Sugarloaf and Jack. And there is Sugarloaf and Jack in a hot air balloon, which I love this one. It is so stinking cute, you guys. It's adorable. So I'm excited about those because I've been kind of collecting needle minders too, and those have really good strong magnets in them. They're always nice to have when you're cross stitching because if you aren't familiar with these, the way that they work is there's a very strong magnet on the back. And they clip through your fabric and they hold together and stick to it. And then the front here is still magnetized in such a way that your needle, you can just set it on there. And it'll stick to your thing instead of having to try to weave it into your fabric and have it stay in place. But I have one of each of those for me. Now, I did tease you all with a giveaway. And I've decided I picked up an extra Sugarloaf and Jack in the airplane needle minder. And I thought it might be nice to do a giveaway because I haven't done one in a while. And I haven't done a proper giveaway in a while. Usually I do um, knit-alongs and prizes with knit-alongs. But I thought it might be nice to give away a needle minder plus a copy of this coming year's 2016 sampler to one of you. And so how this is going to work is I'm going to start up a thread in the Ravelry group. And it's going to be open for exactly two weeks. I am recording my last podcast of 2015 on the 16th of December, which is two weeks from today, and I'm going to announce the winner there. And for the winner, because I'm getting ready to go out of town and will be out of town through the end of the year, if you want your prize before the beginning of the year, you're going to have to contact me right away. So if you enter, be sure to watch when that podcast goes up right away and contact me. Um, what I'm going to give away is a copy of the sampler, which is digital, so... Um, you will have to send me your email address and then I think I can purchase a gift subscription. Sorry, I just suddenly got a scratch in my throat. We're going to have some tea here real quick. Jenny the Potter Mug. Um, I will need your email address and every month you will get the next pattern clue to the sampler which you then print out and you work on that section of the sampler. But I'm also going to send you in the mail the needle minder. Now, I may send you some other little things too, I'm not sure. I want to open this up to anyone who definitely wants to work on the sampler. Um, if you're a newer cross-stitcher, let me know because I might put in some other little goodies for you. Um, if you're a more seasoned cross-stitcher and you have a lot of supplies already, then you know, let me know that too. So what it's going to be is I'm going to open up the thread. And there's going to be a prompt to answer because I usually don't have prompts, but I thought it might be fun to do it. And it's not even a cross-stitch related one if you don't want it to be. It's, what was your favorite project of 2015? Because we're almost to the end of the year, you guys. And then, what are your crafty plans for 2016? So, yeah, I would love to hear all about what you guys have been working on. What's your favorite thing? Did you learn a new favorite technique, maybe? Did you try something new? Um, did you try a new craft? Did you master picking up stitches or seaming? Was there something you are especially proud of and happy about this year that you did? Maybe you learned to spin, or maybe you picked up weaving, or you started cross-stitching, or I don't know, maybe you're doing Hardanger, which is a, I think it's a Norwegian embroidery technique that's like cross stitch but you cut things out of it too. We have some hard anger in our home because both of our families are Norwegian. Um, but anyway, um, 
just tell me about it. I would love to hear about it and what you did and what you're planning to do maybe next year because that's going to be the focus of some of the next podcasts is going to be talking about 2016 and what my plans are from here on out for that. So yes, please enter. I will close the thread down right before I record on the 16th and I will draw a winner at that time and I will make it a point to remind you guys all next week for just in case um, somebody misses this episode but they watch the next one so that you guys know. So there's two full weeks to enter. Um, and we're going to end today with an Ask Me Anything, which came in just recently into the group. And it's from Anita, who is Introverted Knits. And she says, Hi, Amanda. I know you are a planner, and with December finally here, I was wondering if you were still planning on doing your Zombody Sock Club for 2016. Last we knew, you were still looking for some colorways. Did you manage to snag them? What other crafty plans do you have for the coming year? In particular, do you think you will spin for another sweater? Hope you have a great holiday season. Best of luck in the new year. Well, thank you, Anita, and hi back to you. Um, so thank you for the questions. You always ask me really good ones, and I'm happy that I give off the illusion that I am a very organized and together person. I do try to make plans, but I understand that my plans are really going to get derailed like nine times out of ten, but I do try to make them. So I have been starting to give some thought to next year, but I'm kind of in the part of the thought process right now where I'm thinking about what I did this year and starting to look back on it and thinking about how well... I did on last year's resolutions, and I'm actually about to rewatch the last podcast, last year's podcast, where I um, talked about them and analyze how well I did on the specific resolutions and what ones worked and what ones didn't. So your full question isn't going to get answered in this podcast because I'm actually planning to do a special end of the year, either New Year's Eve or New Year's Day mini episode where I talk specifically about resolutions and plans instead of doing a regular podcast. So let's talk about some of the questions here. Um, it's funny that you brought up the Zombody idea because I was just talking to Kate about it about a week ago. Um, we had thought we were going to do this in 2016 and um, the idea has kind of fallen through. At this moment in time, no, we're not, I'm not planning to do a Zombody knit along in 2016 solely because I didn't buy any new Zombody colorways this year. I was actually really good in general about not stashing too much yarn and I didn't see any colorways that I just had to have and I'm really indecisive about which ones I would want. I think I have one in stash and I need 11 more to do a full year's worth of socks. And at this point in time, I can think of one colorway that for sure I want to add to that, which is Zombody's Jumping in the Leaves, I think it is. It's a really pretty colorway with kind of a sweet potato color, and I think there's like a reddish purple in it with the Zombody decomposition stripes in between. But the rest of them, I'm not sure. <laughs> I got hit with indecision and an inability to pull the trigger. So as of right now, I'm not going to do that. But I am still keeping the option open for the future. And I'm hoping that maybe next year I might start picking up a few more colorways. And I don't know, maybe I'll do just holidays or something in the future. So for right now, no. And I didn't manage to get any more colors because I just couldn't make up my mind. So what other crafty plans do I have for the coming year? Um, right now I'm thinking about that. I am currently thinking about attempting another 12 pairs um, sock club for myself and I've been debating between a year of self-striping yarns because I have so many or just another generic sock club where I throw in a mixture of different yarns including I might throw in hand spun this next year but I kind of want to keep hand spun socks separate I think. I'm still working on solidifying what my plans are. Let me see what other things did you ask. Do I plan to spin for another sweater? Yes. I have enough yarn or fibers and stash intended for sweaters that I could spin for two, maybe three more sweaters. I definitely want to spin for another one after I knit up my first one that I have spun. And I think that's really all you asked besides wishing me a happy new year and a happy holiday season. And I appreciate that. Thank you. And I hope you're having a lovely one too. So 
I'm going to be talking more in depth about 2016's crafting plans when I do the mini episode at either the very last day of this year or the first day of next year, and then I will edit it and upload it before resuming the podcast schedule. There are going to be two more podcasts this year. There's this one, and then there will be one next week and the Wednesday after, which is the 16th of December. After that, I am going back home for about 10 days to visit family and to do the holiday thing, and then we're going to get back here, and we're going to very stressfully try to get settled back in before my kids go back to school. Their winter break is really messed up this year, and I'm not sure why. So based on timing, (laughs) things are going to be a little tight. So basically, in two weeks, the podcast is going to go on hiatus for at least two weeks after that, because there's no way I'm recording on the 23rd. And there's no way that I'm recording on the 30th. But I'm hoping, but I should be getting home around the 30th. Um, I'm hoping to do the mini episode um, last day of this year or first day of next year. And then I think that following Wednesday, whatever that first Wednesday in January is, I'm hoping to resume the normal podcast schedule. Um, On that same note, Lammy is going on vacation for the year um, that same week. So I'll be recording through December the 16th and December the 17th, that following Thursday, that evening, Lammy is closing for the rest of 2015 until the first week of 2016. Hopefully I just said all the right numbers because I just realized I kind of drifted off for a second. (laughs) That'd be fun. If I said something weird... I'm just a little bit distracted based on those texts that keep coming in and they're kind of nagging at me to look at them. So anyway, kittens, I think that's all I have for you today. Please make sure to come um, leave an entry in the Ravelry group if you would like to have a chance to win the needle minder and the pattern. And I will talk to you next week, hopefully with more actual crafting content. Have a nice day, kittens. Bye.